Alright, hi guys. Today I'm going to be taking a small look at and giving you a little bit of history about this M56 slash 76 helmet. So this is my East German helmet. Um, I got it um, a while ago actually when these were only about, uh, oops, yeah, canteens aren't the best uh, mannequin head, but I got this for $40. This was before they went and got to the price of, you know, $100. Um, this is one of the later ones. Uh, no rivets. Um, it's got one of the liners with the plastic in it. This is a size 2 medium. Um, you can check that because right here. You can't see it very well, but above that little 1, there's a 2 in Roman numerals, so two, so size two, which was medium, then one, so January, then 88, so 1988. Um, so this was um, just a little bit before East Germany dissolved, and it is in pristine condition. So got all the paint there. Um, I mean, that's probably the biggest scratch on it, and that's not that big at all. And there's not even scratches on, like, the top of the helmet, where the soldier would have laid it down. And these scratches are probably from storage. So, this was, by my best guess, never issued. Um, the whole idea behind this helmet was that instead of having a heavy... Um, helmet with a lot of thick steel, why not have a light helmet with angled steel? And so instead of it just kind of taking the bullet, it makes the bullet bounce off. Um, Mike B does a pretty cool video. He does a shooting test of one of these. Um, and it actually stands up very well. It's the best um, steel helmet that he ever shot, <laughs> apparently. So, a little bit of history. So, these actually started out in 1940, well, really 1939. Um, the Germans were already kind of looking for helmets that would perform a little bit better. They started doing tests in 1942 with a Type A, a Type B, a Type B2, and a Type C. Um, I'm pretty sure what went in production was the B2 type. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So, this, uh, these helmets, the reason they wanted something better than the M35 and 40 and 42 was because they were really hard to manufacture, and these were more effective, um, both in the manufacturing process and in actually taking hits. Um, there were a lot of complaints about the M35 and 40 and M42 helmets actually, um, for them either not being able to withstand hits or, you know, still, although they somewhat withstood them, the soldier would be wounded very badly in the head. So this was kind of their solution, and, uh, when they were testing this, they actually went behind Hitler's back, and they only told him in 1944, um, about the B and B2 types, which had gone through testing, at a military school, uh, an institute, and they performed pretty well. Uh, these performed the best compared to uh, every other helmet they had captured. Um, the British helmet did the worst out of all their tests, and this one did the best. So, Hitler said he wanted to keep the M35 and M40 and M42 helmets. Um, we think most likely because that was just kind of the look of the German army at that time. You don't want a whole new helmet. Also, you know, this is late war, 1944. They might not have everything they need to produce a whole new series of helmets. Well, yet again, they kind of go behind Hitler's back and they have a whole plant made to produce these things. And so... 
they produced 50 of the B type and 50 of the B2 type. And this is when they uh, started testing them at that institute. And uh, they were actually used in the Battle of Berlin, um, uh, some of them. Uh, I don't know of any surviving examples today. There's one at a museum, can't remember which one, in their East German um, collection. And they think that the helmet they have was an original World War II production one used in the Battle of Berlin. Now, so then World War II is won. These helmets, um, they're kind of left in the dust. And East Germany is split. At first, they kind of use um, the A-type. It kind of, it's basically the A-type at first is what they used. But uh, they were resembled the Soviet helmets, and, uh, well, people in East Germany didn't really like that. They didn't really like the Soviets. And they wanted to change the helmet design, but they didn't want to look like Nazis either. They didn't want, uh, they didn't want regular old Stahlhelms, Stahlhelms, sorry. And so they're looking, designing, rethinking, and then somebody realizes, oh, wait, um, what about these helmets? These were already designed. And luckily for them, the factory that had produced them during World War II, with all the equipment, was on the East German border, on their side. So, they started producing these. Now, originally, they had three rivets. One here, one here, and one here. And they had a different liner system that had, that didn't have this plastic bit, it was secured um, by those rivets up there, but it was, it had a pad of, like, black foam here, a pad of black foam here, a pad of black foam here, and a pad of black foam here. Um, so, and the, also the first ones, um, that came on May 1st, 1956, had a red, yellow, and black decal that would go right here. You can probably search up pictures of them pretty easy. Um, so I do want to get an early production variation, but, you know, these things are getting really expensive. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to see if I can get one in my size, which, even though this is a size 2, my head is enormous, and so it doesn't fit. But uh, even when I do try it on, um, this leather is very, very soft. Um, they went against most rules of helmet production. Usually, people will put the smooth side on the outside. The East Germans are different. They put that on the inside. They let the ruffle on the outside. Same with the liner. Let the ruffle on the outside instead of the inside. And both sides are rough. So they didn't really have a smooth side. And, um... So that was more for comfort, but again, mine is in very good condition. So you can see the adjustable straps, they had the Y system. So I'll let you take a good look at that. And here I'll move this. That's the inside, not much to see there. Which, actually, this leather is very soft. This one is in very, very good condition. And so is the leather. So, alright, that's about it. Just a small history video. Um, thanks for watching. Please check out some of my other videos. Um, please like, comment, or subscribe.